Loop and Learn today. Today we're talking about Sugar Mate, um, and we have the founder, Joss Jester, who's also a type 1 diabetic. Um, this is looping, and so we all understand that this is a highly experimental project. It's not approved by the FDA or anybody, for that matter, for therapy other than those who are using it and know it works. Um, we take full responsibility for building the app, for running the system, and we do so at our own risk. Make sure you're nodding to yourself saying, yes, I agree with this, and then we can move on. Um, so today we're going to talk about SugarMate, which, um, which I am new to. Um, and it is now my central focus on my, my watch app, uh, watch, Apple Watch. So, um, and Glenn is the one who introduced me. Um, it's a CGM companion app. It syncs blood sugar readings and activity. It runs across any and all devices in real time. It's compatible with Dexcom G4, 5, and 6. I think I read um, Abbott Libre is coming along. It also works with Night Scout. And uh, this is just really quite the honor we get to hear from Josh, who actually developed this. Uh, he's he's a smart young man. Um, so I was reading his background. He has a, a BS and a master's in engineering and computer science from MIT in cognitive machines, where robots are used for machine understanding. So really, really smart. Um, he started his career at Microsoft and in 2007 started companies, uh, including um, something called the Happy Hours app, in, I think in New York City. And I think I did hear about this app, which let you know, know where happy hours were. Uh, he founded GoTime and Wild Village. And in 2016, he developed Sugar App. So I just want to turn this over to, to Josh and go tell us everything we need to know, please. Sounds great. Thanks for the intro. I guess today I just wanted to give everyone a product overview of SugarMate and just walk through um, the actual product from beginning to end. Um, so just to tell, tell you a little bit about myself, I was diagnosed with type 1 about 27 years ago. I'm currently using a Dexcom G6 and I, I got a, a T-Slim insulin pump um, a couple months ago. Um, before that, I was mostly MDI using insulin pens. I've had a companion medical in pen device. I was before the G6, I was using the G5. I had a Freestyle Libre. Um, about 10 years ago, I, I tried out Dexcom's early CGM, the 7 Plus. And uh, back in college, I had an, uh, an old uh, mini med insulin pump. Um, as Joanne man mentioned, my, I've spent most of my career focused on consumer software. I originally was at MIT. I left to go work at Microsoft on some consumer products like Xbox Live, MSN Music, Mobile Search. Um, I started an app called Happy Hours. They told you all the food and drink specials in the country, um, worked on a bunch of other apps, and that's what led me to start SugarMate. Um, so I just want to jump into how SugarMate came to be. Um, it started back in the summer of 2016. I had just gotten the Dexcom G5, and I had an Apple Watch, and I really just wanted to get readings onto my watch face. Well, there was an app that existed that tried to do this, but it faced um, one of Apple's limitations that would only let you update the watch face about once every 20 to 30 minutes or about 50 times a day. And so I was just trying to figure out if there was a way to get around this. And I realized that Apple's own calendar app um, seemed to update more frequently. So I, I put together a quick app um, um, that would actually grab readings from Dexcom and then post them to an iCloud calendar. And sure enough, it worked. And so I you know, decided to upload this to the App Store um, so other people could try it out. And uh, yeah, I guess the, the rest is history. So I mean, I think at that moment, being able to have those readings on my watch face at all times was just so powerful. Um, and that just helped me think of, um, or led me to think of other ideas um, and other features that I can add um, to take advantage of um, this data. And so that led to what SugarMate is today, and the mission of the company is to utilize this real-time CGM data to give people with diabetes the tools they need to really improve their control and better their lives. So, you know, SugarMate can be broken down into you know, to four main uh, facets. There's uh, the concept of having ubiquitous readings, being able to get readings anytime, any, anywhere. So if you're, you know, at work, being able to see the reading in the corner of your screen, or if you're just cooking in the kitchen, being able to ask for your reading or while you're driving in your car. Um, the next is motivation through data. So now you have all this powerful data coming in, how can you display it in certain ways to, to help want to keep, help keep you on track? 
Um, there are dependable notifications. Um, so, you know, maybe you're not always able to pay attention to your readings and um, the app will be able to let you know certain circumstances where you might want to take control. And finally, hassle-free logging. So there are time, there are sometimes some people who really want to put every little detail into the system to track it and to, to make changes, but sometimes you really just want to mark something off um, as quickly as possible and the app kind of lets you do all that. So just to start with ubiquitous readings, so SugarMate gets its readings from Dexcom Share using the follow system, um, or it could also use the, a Night Scout site. Um, once the information gets into SugarMate servers, it then distributes that it, it distributes that to all other uh, SugarMate devices. Sorry, I can't see the left side of my screen. One sec. Well, I, I can talk. To, so in terms of SugarMate devices, there's uh, it's available on iPhone, iPad. There's a a responsive website that works on any device, a uh, Mac app that uses the, the website but also displays your reading in the top corner of the screen. Um, there's also, um, as you guys know, the Apple Watch feature that um, when you set that up will actually also display in your car on CarPlay. There's, vo there's voice integration using Siri and Alexa. Um, and we have, we're currently beta testing uh, Zapier, a home automation solution. So you could actually do things like turn your lights on when your sugar drops. And we have an Android app that is close to uh, being ready for, uh, for beta testing. And so, you know, anytime anyone adds any information on any of these devices, um, it will automatically sync to all other, those, uh, all other of those devices in real time. You know, so, you know, at, so in terms of motivating you to, to make changes, there's um, 30 customizable tiles um, that you can display and you can configure uh, whatever time ranges you want. There's, some simple ones like your uh, average or your estimated A1C or GMI, uh, your time and range. There's some more advanced ones if, if you're really, if you're a stat demon, Glenn. Um, mm, yep. But, uh, like quartiles and uh, standard deviation. And there's some more fun ones um, you might discover, like tracking how many times you have gotten a unicorn, which is when your sugar is, uh, this is debatable, but it's when your sugar is uh, exactly 100 or 5.5 millimoles per liter. Um, you could export this data to Excel, um, where you could view it uh, a tab per day with graphs and has all your raw data if you want to look at it that way. And there's some other stats throughout the app as well. Um, you know, so as, as mentioned, we're, we're sending a lot of notifications. We're making about 132,000 phone calls uh, a month all over the world, a uh, similar number of text messages, um, and about 3, 000, 3 million push notifications are being sent. So one of, one of the most popular features is actually the below normal call. And so users can receive a phone call um, if your sugars drop while you're sleeping. So, you know, you might have push notification fatigue um, or you just might not uh, easily wake up to your phone. And so, you know, the, hopefully the phone call um, will actually wake you up. Um, we also allow you to text message um, friends and family when your sugar gets urgently low. Um, you know, that way they don't actually necessarily need to even install the app. They'll just receive those texts once they confirm their account. Um, and it could also include your GPS coordinates um, so they know where you are. And finally, there are a bunch of additional push notifications. So these are more complementary to notifications in the Dexcom's main app or the Dexcom follow app. Um, but they can, uh, I'll get into more detail about, about those later as I go through the demo. And finally, just hassle-free logging. So this is just a, an example of a, a food logging screen. Um, we have an integrated nutritional database using Fat Secret. There's barcode scanning, voice lookup. Um, we actually pull in images from Google for any of the food that you look up. Um, if you don't want to take a picture of it, and there's voice dictation as well. Um, we have two uh, full two-way Apple Health syncing, so you could import, if you decide you want to use a different food tracking app, you can do that and just import that data that way, or you can uh, export data to other apps. Um, one really cool scenario was, uh, I guess most people on here are, are loopers, but if you use the uh, in-pen device, you can give yourself a shot. It'll then send it Bluetooth to your phone to the in-pen app, which goes into Apple Health then SugarMate gets that data and sends it out to all SugarMate apps uh, you know, pretty instantly. So it's, it's a pretty cool demo. Um, you can also take in steps if you use an Apple Watch or you have your phone set to, to pull in steps or a Fitbit and SugarMate will convert those um, into discrete walk, run, or jog events. Um, so you'll see that on your graph or in your activity feed. And finally, you can track all your insulin, uh, bolus and basal schedules and uh, medication as well. Wow. Um, so that was a, a quick summary of all the features currently in SugarMate, but uh, I guess next, if, if, you, if you guys like, I can go through a demo of the app or we can stop for questions. No, go. 
but your right. is amazing. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing and then reshare um, the simulator screen. All right. Can you guys see the simulator? You bet. Awesome. So um, this is so if you open up the app for the first time, this is what you see. It's just an introductory screen where you can find more about the app. But if you click Get Started, um, look through the terms and conditions, check it off, and then you can sign up for a new account. So I'll actually just go ahead and do that right now. Just making up an email. Put in the password twice and then go next. And then now you get uh, to add your data source. So your options are adding it through Dexcom follow or a Night Scout site. So let's just go through the steps to add it on Dexcom. Um, okay, so you're given an email address that you'll then um, open up your Dexcom app and add it as a follower. Um, so I'll just click the demo video to show you, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna click it to copy it to my clipboard so I can add it on my phone. Um, you guys can't see that part, but I'll just run through the demo while I do that. Josh, um, between doing it with uh, Dexcom or Night Scout, yep. is one more efficient than the other? One more yeah, the, generally the doing it with the Dexcom one is because it's one less step in the middle. So if you do it with Night Scout, it's pulling it from a, another device. And so it's, it could be a minute or two behind, or it can be less. But um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend doing, if you have a follow slot and you can do that, I, I would recommend using Dexcom follow. So, all right, so the, I just actually just added as a follower and I'm on, on my Dexcom app and I'm just gonna kick, click, I added it. And, um, you know, sometimes this is pretty instant, but it could take, oh, okay, it was pretty quick. It just added the source and, and that's it. So I clicked okay. Um, you get a getting started screen. I'm gonna skip over this, but it just shows you some of the things that you can do in the app that we kind of talked about, but I'll walk through all those in the app itself and just click done and here you go. So it, it loads in the last 24 hours of readings the first time you open it. Um, you can see your reading at the top. This number on the far right is the your delta from the previous reading that you had. So my sugar is uh, coming down. Hopefully it doesn't go down too far during this demo. I might have to run and get some juice. But um, this is the, the graph. And you can see this gray area here is your normal range, which we'll configure um, in a bit. Right now it's set to 80 to 120. This pink line is the your urgent low level, which is, is set to 50 by default. And um, this black line here is just the current time. And so you can do a bunch of stuff with the graph. You can pinch to zoom if you want to zoom in and out. Um, you can um, rotate the screen to get a bigger view of your, of your numbers as well. And, oops, sorry. And then you can hold down and just scroll and see your numbers at any point as well. Um, if you scroll back, you can click on the Y axis on the right here and it'll jump to the beginning wherever you are. So the next section is um, the customizable tiles that we talked about. And so you can scroll through, there's a bunch of uh, default tiles. Um, if I open up this area, um, you can see all the ones that we have set up right now. I can tap any tile and it'll flip over and you can set the time period. So right now the graph is set for six hours, but I can jump it to let's say 24 hours and it instantly changes. Um, here's the core tiles tile, for example, I'll flip that over if I click the I You'll get some more information about what that tile means. Um, but let's say I'm not interested in it. I'll just click the minus sign, confirm, and remove that tile. And I'm going to click on this plus sign down here to go ahead and add another tile. So you can see there's a bunch of different ones uh, that you can add. I'm going to go ahead and do the, the fun unicorn one. Uh, this is going to be pretty depressing because I have zero unicorns in the last 24 hours. My sugars are normally a lot better than this, I promise. Um, and I can just add that tile, or you could then hold down on the tile. Whoops, sorry. Um, hold down on the tile and drag it and move it wherever you'd like. Um, and then finally, you have this activity area down here, and this is where it'll show all the feed items that'll also appear on the graph. We'll just show some more details. If you see these numbers on the right here, this is the, your stats for today, and it'll show it for every day as you add more activity. Um, this, these numbers here, and you can actually customize this in settings, but these numbers here right now are your percent below, uh, percent in range, and percent high. Again, please, please ignore my sugars. Um, and the next number is your average and then your standard deviation. And you can click on that area and it brings up um, some more detailed stats for that day. Um, you can customize that here and pick which stats you wanna see. Um, or you can actually use these arrows to just scroll back uh, and forth between days. But we only have 24 hours of, of sugars because I created a new account. Normally you'd have a lot more data here. Um, and so let's go ahead and actually add some activity. So if you click this plus sign down here, you can see what you can add. You can track 
food, insulin, exercise, um, manually enter glucose readings, um, your medication, or just random notes, and you can track device stuff like if you change your sensor or transmitter um, or your pod or, or whatever you're using. So just let's go ahead and add a food item. I don't know if the microphone's gonna work um, with Zoom, but I'll try. Banana pancakes, great. So I'll click that and then, you know, that's actually the reason my sugar is so high right now from my breakfast this morning. Um, and you can see it pulled in the picture and the information and you can scroll through other ones if you wanna find it. Um, and then just click add. And there's, that was where the barcode scanner was as well. Um, and saving the data puts all the information in and just saves it. And you can see it appear on the graph and down below. And SugarMate also does work in offline mode. So if you were on a plane and you added any of this information, just the next time you have service, it'll sync uh, with all the devices as well. But um, what's neat is the second you add that item, it, you know, it will automatically appear on other devices too. So if you have like a child who's at school and adds their food and insulin and they have an internet connection on their phone, it'll immediately appear for, for, you, know, your, for you as well. And uh, let's go ahead and add um, another, uh, let's go click on, yeah, let's go click on here and add another item. We'll do an X, I, this time I just double tapped on the graph on the time I wanted to add it. Um, and I'm just gonna add an exercise item. I'll do an hour of um, medium intensity. Let's go ahead and just add maybe cardio and save that. And you can see that appears on the graph here. Um, you can see it actually has a length, so it shows you the end of that cardio. And if you look, um, another feature is if you, sorry, um, if you look at the feed below here, the top right of the food item shows you the, the value of your, your blood sugar reading at that time. Um, for the cardio, for the cardio here, because there it's an actual length there, you could see the time that you started the cardio, and then you could see the time that you finished it as well. So let me now jump into all the different settings of the app and how you can customize it. So if you click on that top left button on the side, you can pull out the the menu, and if I go to settings, um, there's a bunch of different items here. So data source just shows that we added the Dexcom follow here. You can remove that if you wanted to, and Add a night scout site um, or change your follow if, something, if something's wrong with it. And this just lets you decide how long you're gonna keep the data on your phone. By default, it's, it's the last 30 days, but all the data is still stored on our server. So if you decide to keep less information on your phone, you can always scroll back as much as you want. And it, does not, it doesn't affect the stats or anything. Um, let's go look at ranges and units. Right now, I mentioned that 80 to 120 was the default, but let's maybe up that up to 80 to one. Well, let's make it 140. Um, we'll keep the urgent low and you can also set your sleep hours. So um, the sleep hours are used for some of the tiles that um, you, know, you could also, in, in addition to saying like this tile is for three hours or six hours, you can say since the time you woke up um, as well to look at stats from, you know, from that time and it uses that number there. And it also comes into play uh, in the below normal call alert um, that we'll get to in a bit. Um, I can click on display settings. If I want, I can adjust the graph height. Um, I can decide whether or not to hide that delta that's uh, displayed for your reading. You could actually change the color of the dots on the graph. So um, by default, it's based on the theme, but it could also be white or based on the reading. So it'll be green if you're in range, yellow if you're above or red below. And then you can go ahead and change this theme just for fun. Um, so I'll just change it to, I kind of like the blue one. Um, you could add insulin and medications here, and that's where you'd also add your, your basal schedules um, if you want to. Um, there's some activity settings. Um, nothing that's probably worth going into now, but um, you could also, as mentioned, integrate uh, with Apple Health. So you can turn on continuous import here. You can convert um, your steps into exercise events here, and you could also set up uh, to export your health data too if you want to other apps. It looks like I already turned it on for importing uh, earlier today. Um, and then as mentioned, you could add Siri shortcuts. So there's a couple types that you can add here. You can do, uh, we'll just simply add your current reading. So if I just say, what's my sugar, um, it'll just give me my, my current value. Um, you could also set up outside the app uh, using, a, an, you can set up an Alexa skill as well to ask any uh, Amazon Echo device. Um, there's a bunch of other Siri shortcuts, or shortcuts here as well that'll pop up the app if you wanna input data, or there's a few new ones, um, save carbs and save exercise minutes that work really well with, if you open up the Siri shortcuts app itself, um, you could set those up to, so you can actually create an icon that goes on your, on your uh, home screen, and if you click that, it'll automatically add an entry with a pre-designated amount of carb carbs or exercise minutes. So if you had some certain things that are you do all the time, you can make that an icon like an app. Um, and let's go now to the alert section. Quick question, Josh. Um, 
um, um, the um, what you just had on the screen before. Um, can you ask it what your blood sugar is and what the trend is? That came up yesterday in someone someone in the group. Yeah, so it actually tells you the trade. So it'll tell you the, the way that it, it'll read back to you not only the value, it'll say um, if it's the trend, like if it's going, if it's rising quickly or, or steady, um, and it'll also tell you the change since your previous reading That's as well. Great. That's great. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think, you know, as mentioned in the, the slides before, there are three types of notifica notifications. There's push notifications, there's text messaging, emergency contacts, and there's phone calls. So if, just to take a deeper look at the, push notifications, there's predictive, a predictive high alert. So that'll basically tell you if your sugar has been trending upward for, a, for an hour and it crosses a certain threshold. Um, so this might be good if you're just not paying attention to your readings or you forgot to give yourself uh, an insulin dose and this would actually catch that potentially and let you know. Um, predictive low is similar, but in the reverse. So it'll let you know if you're steadily dropping for the last hour and cross a certain threshold. As mentioned, these are not meant to replace your normal alerts. They're just additional types of alerts that you might find useful. Uh, with what you find in the Dexcom or Dexcom follow app. Um, there's a steady and above normal alert. So, you know, you might not be pay paying attention to your readings and it's steady, but it's just higher than you want it to be. So you maybe want to take a correction dose um, and it can let you know about that. And finally, there's an alert that lets you know if no readings are coming in. Um, if you do track your sensor or transmitter change um, in the activity feed, that alert won't go off um, just because it knows that you're doing that. Um, if we jump into emergency contacts, um, as I mentioned, you could turn on the GPS location tracking. Um, be careful, this does use up more battery life. Um, sorry, I have to just turn it on to be always on. Yeah, wait, sorry, I don't have, I'm using a keyboard to navigate here. And you can then click add contacts. It'll open up your contact manager. You can pick one. It'll show the phone number options and they'll receive a text message that they just need to confirm. And when they do, this red uh, exclamation point will turn to a green check mark and they should be good to go. If you click here, um, when, when you are confirmed, you'll actually be able to send them a text message, a test text mes message to make sure the feature is working for them. Um, and finally, the phone call feature. Um, I don't know how far I can get in the setup, but if you, because um, I'm, I'm running a simulator, but if you turn this on, you'll, you'll be asked to enter your phone number. Um, you'll also confirm that number with a text message. And then at that point, um, you'll receive phone calls um, uh, whenever your sugar gets below whatever you have set for your normal range, only during your sleep hours. And uh, I guess the last fe feature worth mentioning is just if you go to stats and reports here on the left, you can um, email an Excel spreadsheet to yourself or anyone. Um, you can configure whatever time range you want. You can include the photos and it'll, it'll include all the details of the activity that you've added in the app and it breaks it down with a summary page as well as other tabs for every single day with a, with a graph showing that data in the, in the spreadsheet itself. And uh, you know, it might be okay as is, or you might want to play around with that spreadsheet um, you know, to do more uh, data analysis too. So I think that is a, a quick run through of uh, most of the features of the app, but um, if anyone has any questions or wants me to show anything else, oh, I did, actually, I'm sorry, I missed the Apple Watch. Um, should I go through that setup real quick? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ah, all right. And the, the last feature is the Apple Watch feature. So um, to set that up, you click on the setup tab and you know, it's, a, it's a little tedious to get this going, but once you do, it, it should be very reliable. Um, you click on setup and add a new calendar and you would enter. So at this point, um, it's probably best you click on show instructions or email instructions to you. Um, and it'll tell you how to acquire an app specific password. So there are a couple steps, but hopefully the instructions are, are fairly straightforward, but you need to go to appleid.apple.com to get that 16 digit password. So you would then enter the Apple ID associated with, the, um, with your phone, put that in there. And then I have, I previously got an app specific password. So I'm just gonna paste that in here and click okay. And that's, that's it. So then you go to step two is just telling you how to set up your, your Apple Watch to display that. So you'll want to use one of these watch faces um, that we have here um, because the calendar complication can only be in certain spots and on certain watch faces, although there, there are quite a few options. So let's say I choose the modular one. It just lets me know that you want to actually put the calendar complication uh, in the middle slot here, as you see in this picture. Uh, so it'll appear if you put it in other slots, it probably won't display all that data and you might not know what's going on. Um, so that 
is generally all you'll have to do, although there are a bunch of settings on your phone that if they're not configured properly, may, might interfere with syncing. So um, I would recommend if you're having issues, go, um, go check out the troubleshooting steps and see which step applies to you. Um, if you're seeing readings and they disappear, um, you know, more frequently than you'd like, it's very likely it's an issue with iCloud push. And there's some troubleshooting steps in there um, to, to fix that, but you would um, go to the settings app, go to passwords and accounts, um, click fetch new data. So I've done this a few times and then turn on push um, at the top and then make sure push is turned on for your iCloud account as well. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I mean, if, you know, I know Dexcom, the, the primary app does, you know, have an Apple Watch feature too, but some, you know, sometimes it can also be inconsistent um, and you might see the dreaded three dashes and um, SugarMate is, you know, generally very reliable as long as you have an internet connection and, and things are configured correctly. Um, talk about that for a second. I, yeah. I was out of um, my house yesterday and I was not getting sugar mate reading. And so I went through your troubleshooting, which is really comprehensive. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it came down to cellular data. Um, is there a yeah. standard setting that it, were, that it should be set at so that I, you run data when you're out? Um, yeah, you definitely want cellular data turned on for a calendar um, if you um, if you plan on using it outside of Wi-Fi, which most people would. Mm -hmm. um, it's worth noting if you're also if you are a fo another advantage is if you're a follower of somebody. I mean, if you're the main Dexcom user, then you always need to have your phone on you um, to for the Dexcom app to get those readings and to sh to share them. But if you are a follower, um, as long as your phone is turned on and connected to any internet, it doesn't have to be near you you'll still receive um, updates on your watch as long as your watch has internet access as well. So if you have a cellular watch, you could leave your house with the, with the if you're a follower um, with the phone at home, as long as it's also turned on and connected to the internet. Okay. This is wildly comprehensive. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm assuming you did it in modulars, but how did you develop this and how long did it take to get it to where it is now? Yeah, so I guess, I mean, I, I did start it in summer of 2016, although I mean, I was working on other projects then, so I probably didn't go full time until probably closer to the end of the year. But then, um, yeah, I just, I just thought it was going in a great direction. I just kept adding features and, and building it out and, uh, you know, talking to a lot of users, um, you know, over email or social media and getting, getting ideas. And, you know, so I, you know, just, uh, I guess it gradually happened over a few years, but, you know, as having type one myself, um, you know, kind of, have some instinct on features that I want to build and, you know, talking to people helps too. Yeah. And question about Apple health. Um, I know in loop, we turned on, we turn on reading to Apple health. Is there any crossover? I, I'm not, I'm assuming you're not very familiar with loop and Glenn might have a better take on this. Um, but if you put something in Apple health, it'll show up in trigger made as well as it does in loop. Yeah, so I mean, there are definitely there's definitely room for improvement there. I know, you know, I mean, one thing we we recently added um, basal schedules um, into the app, but I know like with something like Loop or Control IQ that you know, there's a lot of insulin events that come in, and so you know, one of the f upcoming features where we will be working on is to handle that data properly and not overwhelm the the graph with that information. So so that's one future enhancement that we're looking into. Um, yeah, I mean, one thing that some loopers might have set up where they're exporting their, their glucose readings um, to Apple Health, and you probably don't want those to import into SugarMate as well, because um, SugarMate handles your CGM readings separately from other types of activity. And so when that, when the glucose readings are getting exported from Loop and then imported, they're getting imported into SugarMate through Apple Health as essentially like manually entered glucose readings as opposed to um, CGM readings and so you'll you'll get probably double stats and you'll see a lot of entries that you probably don't want to you don't want to see because um, all, all those readings will show up in your feed in your activity feed below which where they, where they really aren't meant to be so you know that's definitely one recommend recommendation is to not import glucose readings um, in that case Does that makes sense yep absolutely An interesting question um from someone who's been a fan and thought she had to stop using it when she started loop um she asked whether she can use this app instead of night scout um yeah i mean 
I would, I would, I don't want to, I don't want to say not to use Night Scout. It's a, it's a great site and, uh, and it's a, a great tool. Um, I think it definitely has some features that SugarMate doesn't have. Um, you know, right now SugarMate doesn't have any like insulin on board or, or you know, tracking or anything like that at, the, at this time. But um, depending on your, the features that you use, SugarMate can work instead of it, uh, instead of Night Scout in terms of just displaying your readings on a web page, for example. And if you're going to your endo, you could go to reports um, export it into Excel and show that to your endo. Um, I can't like technically endorse that, but um, okay. <laughs> you, it's something that <laughs> you can email, you can email things, uh, reports from SugarMate. <laughs> okay. It's always an interesting issue of showing Anyone you want. what we're doing to our endos who go, okay, fine. <laughs> they don't quite know what looping does. So they go, Oh, looks good. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, so question. It does generate a relatively pretty spreadsheet that hopefully is readable. I hope, but yeah. <laughs> it is. It is a pretty good-looking spreadsheet. Uh, there's probably Thank more you. data I'd like to have on it, but there it is a pretty good-looking spreadsheet. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, definitely room for improvement. Thanks. What what what's not on there that you'd like to see, Glenn? Well, I think it has. Uh, from what I remember, it has standard deviation on it. It might have CV percent. But there's some other statty kinds of things that I would like on. Uh, I, I know it has the quartile, I believe it has the quartiles on it and the mean and the mode and, you know, it's kind of basic, kind of, kind yeah, of. Yeah, like I don't even think it has some of those. I think it's pretty basic to like your average and your your percent high, low, um, yeah, and a couple others. It's, it's yeah, definitely I'm, basic. I, I'm, I'm right really now. big on CV percent. So yeah, uh, that's like the, the stat that everybody's sort of watching now. Got it. All right, we'll, we'll look into that for sure. Um, Glenn, you yeah. did ask a question about um, some of your glucose dots being big and some being small. And is that a double posting issue from Apple Health? Yeah, so, and I'm actually holding it up, but I don't know if wow. I would not. Um, yeah. That's, wow, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, yeah. so I think, I think to solve that first problem, I think, you know, for loopers, I would not import um, glucose readings from Apple Health. Yeah, and I I, sus I always suspected that was it. But what's funny yeah. is sometimes I have them and sometimes I don't have them. And I suspect it's possibly when I'm not getting readings, um, you know, that if the health isn't connected, well, it, it's probably not overriding. Yeah, them. it's pr it's probably the fact that just it's a lot of data import from Apple Health, and some of it's happening in the background. And so you know, to get readings every five minutes from Apple Health while the app might be minimized or not not being open for battery reasons yeah I, I would just yeah you you're going to have much more reliable readings just having connected to a cg you know directly to dexcom or night scout you know and then yeah you know, well yeah. Uh, but it has to get some of the data from loop to populate oh yeah definitely yeah, I'm sorry. To, you know if you you have to get the carbs well i guess it could get the carbs from night scout right uh, well, actually sugar mate right now only pulls glucose readings from night scout um, okay. But no, yeah, but I'm not suggesting turning off all that. I'm just saying turn off just the, the just the specifically stuff turn off looking. blood glucose. So if if you want to do that, um, if you already set it up, you can open up the Apple Health app, click the, the your picture in the top right, then click apps, and then go to SugarMate and turn off importing of uh, blood glucose. Or and yeah, then I think that's probably it. Also, uh, obviously, with a lot of data like Loopers have, it gets pretty dang slow. Um, mm -hmm. do, do you recommend? Just, I mean, obviously, it it already holds the local storage to ninety days. Um, yeah. Do most people do less than that? Um, yeah, I don't know how much impact that would have because it's more of what's getting displayed on the screen. And so, I, I would say to that that yeah, uh, we're working on it. Like, I, I mean, I definitely know you know there are a significant number of users that are loopers or using you know Control IQ. And so, I think we're you know we're gonna figure out how to handle all that extra insulin uh, data in the near future. Josh, I just want to offer up our group for if you have any questions that you want to ask about how Loop runs, um, start with Glenn and you know anybody else who wants to give some input to you. Um, this is a pretty active group, so yeah. if you have questions or you want to post some questions on our site, we'd be glad to do that. That'd be cool, thank you. Um, okay, that. interesting question from, from Sarah. Yeah. If we want the low blood sugar calls to come through during the night to our watch while our phone is on do not disturb, what's your recommendation? 
Hmm. Um, I'm, I'm not totally sure. How, I mean, you, you basically, if your phone is on, if your phone is locked, I think those things will just go straight to your, your phone, your watch directly. So it's more of an Apple setting. Um, it's just how, how the phone and the watch interact. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to say with certainty there. Um, I'd have to look into it some more, but um, yeah, I mean, you generally would put, so one of the other parts of the, the phone feature when you set up that call is you would turn on um, in settings, emergency bypass feature um, for that, for the sugar mate contact, will allow, which will allow it to um, ring loudly um, even when your phone is on do not disturb mode, but it would still go through your phone. Um, so I think it just, there's nothing specific to sugar mate there. It was just a matter of how, um, when calls get routed to your watch versus your phone. Um, and I just, I don't want to, I'm not a hundred percent sure of all those scenarios. Okay. We're not trying to stump you. We're just curious. No, no, no. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to think through it. Um, okay. Because I, I put it recently, I found that it, sometimes it vibrates my watch to wake me up and sometimes it doesn't, but I can hear my phone vibrating on the, the thing. But I was like, i I feel like if I were to set it on my phone into the favorites, you know, yeah. if a favorite in your contact calls you more than once, I think it the, it will ring through well, to the watch and override the do not disturb. But so, that's so better I, than that. Yeah. So better than that, I would, I mean, that's the old way that we used to do with sugar mate, but Apple added a feature. So if you go to that contact and edit it, uh, if Is you edit the, the ring, just the, the just, phone number that sugar mate calls you on, you're saying that's right. So I would, okay. if you haven't, I would save that as a contact. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then you would open the contact, click edit, and then you would scroll down to the ringtone section and click on ringtone. And at the, the very top of that section, um, it says emergency bypass. Got it. Yeah. It's yep. And if you, yeah. Right. And so I would turn that on. Okay. And not only will that then bypass do not disturb mode, but it will also, um, the ring is actually pretty loud. Or is, is, I, I think it's noticeably louder. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we have a, a show us thing. Can you show us where you get the carb and protein entries? Um, so there are, two, there are two ways to do it. So one way I didn't show is if you click on this magnifying glass in the top, this is more if you want to quickly find a food item, not necessarily add it, but you can still add it this way. So if you click that, this window pops up. You can click this button in the top, the bottom left to do a barcode scan, or you can type in something here. Um, let's say, uh, I don't know why I thought of that, but. It's not, I haven't even had that recently, but um, here you go. And so you can just search there and click the magnifying glass and it'll then pull that data from Fat Secret. And so it looks like the first one it got is Trader Joe's. That might not be what you want. Here's a, a nicer looking Cobb style the dressing and you can go through the, one, the results to find what you're looking for. Um, in this case, in, so it's always set to one serving size, but you might want to adjust that as well. Or you could also change right now it's in cups unit um, per cup, but you could change it to servings or it just depends on the food item, what options are available to you. And then you can click add and it creates a new entry. And by default, it would be at the current time, but if you want, you can click this little pencil at the top and you can set the time to whatever you'd like. Um, you know, the other way to get to it is either to, to double tap on the graph at the time you want, and that'll pop up this menu where you can choose food or at any time you can click the plus button down here at the bottom right and you can add food that way. And it's the same thing. You could enter in the information manually at any time. I mean, you could even leave it blank. So if I ate and I'm just too busy to do anything, I can just click it and then save it. And you'll see there'll be a fork and knife of, um, icon on the graph and it's just a pretty blank entry or you can decide to add more information to it if you want. You could set the carbs, you can set the protein. Um, so you could just fill out however much you want to. Um, you could take a picture, you could pull it from your photo library and um, you could even create more comp complex uh, items that don't just have food. They could also, you can add an insulin entry to that as well. So this is because it's a new account, I'm creating a new insulin entry. I'll just add, um, I use Fiast right now. Um, and then you can set, well, this is a temporary basal, but if I wanna just set a, a dose, of, let's say 3.5 units, and that adds it into one single entry with your food and your insulin. So you could track that at the same time. And you could see that it'll stay together on the graph as well. I just saw a Fresa go by. So you have a Fresa in there as well. I do. And it'll then, it'll, it'll keep it, it'll track it too. I, I actually tried that um, years ago as well. It wasn't for me, but it's really interesting. Um, 
but yeah, but when you set that up, it'll also make it so that way when you go through the slider, it'll only be in four unit or eight unit increments. Yeah, fat secret. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a very solid database of of food, um, and they have their own app as well. But they let they let you integrate um, with other apps. Um, so we we use that data. So does this include um, restaurant foods? I saw Trader Joe's. Does it have other local or mainstream businesses with their? Uh, I don't know, In-N-Out Burger. Did. Yeah, I think it would have a lot. It might have some chains, but probably probably not really any local restaurants, I, I wouldn't think. Got it. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, Joanne, is it has a UPC scanner, too, for packaged items. Yep. Wow. <laughs> wow. Did you sleep at all during these last four years? This is comprehensive. This is... <laughs> Thank you. Great. Um, I'm not sure if you've stunned everybody, but... Um, or they just want to go home and play with this. Um, when you set it, when you work on your uh, desktop, yep. it, it, it all just automatically feeds across all platforms. Is that correct? It, it does. So just uh, one point there is, um, you know, we're going to build out a more like a, a true invite system, um, you know, with permissions and so forth. But right now, um, the way it works is you would actually log in using the same email and password that you set up. Uh, for your account originally. And then when you do that, you'll actually still be able to configure your own settings and your own alerts on, on your device. Um, but then all the data will share between devices. So um, if, you, if you originally set it up with a password that's pretty personal to you and you're sharing it with multiple people, um, you could go into the app, into settings, account page, and change your password to something, something else. Um, yeah, we do hope to change this. It's not, it's not ideal, obviously, but um, you know, it's still this method does still let you only use one single follow slot in your Dexcom app, and all the data, as you said, um, should sync close to, to real time across all your devices. I, I just keep wanting to say, wow. Um, it is, okay, another question from Priscilla. Can you enter in, um, into Apple Health without entering any other data? I don't know. I'm, so I'm not sure if you could, I'm not sure if, I forget if it actually exports the entry if you put no data. But you could put, but I mean, the main thing it would export is the amount of carbs that you, um, or other, or other uh, nutritional information that you add, depending on what you have set to export. So you could put minimal data. I, I honestly am not 100% sure if you put zero carbs, if it just doesn't export anything in that case. Um, but otherwise it will. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. This is, this is amazing than any other app available. Thank you so much for your time and attention in your development of this. We appreciate, appreciate you and this resource so very much. We, we use, I use this application every day. And now let's see if there's another. That's awesome. Thank you. And by the way, I but use yeah, it every day too. Really? That's great. Um, by the way, just to, but to go back to Priscilla's question, then um, yeah, I think if you were just talking about the amount of carb information and without exporting other data, you could definitely do that. So when you click on, um, when you go to settings and you go to the Apple Health page uh, in SugarMate, um, let me see if it's not too late. Oh, I guess, I think it is too late because I've already done it. Um, but when you turn on exporting, it'll pop up um, with all the different types of uh, uh, information that you'd be exporting and you would just select the ones that you want. So in that case, you could just turn on, um, you could just export carbs. And if you've already set that up, you can um, open up the Apple Health app um, click your profile picture in the top right on the summary tab, go to apps, go to SugarMate, and then again, you could adjust what data actually gets exported from SugarMate. So you could only export carbs if that's what you'd like to do. Yeah, and obviously loopers uh, do not want to import carbs into loop from SugarMate. So don't, yeah. don't let SugarMate write your carbs. There, there's not much documentation on the flux score and what is an A and what's a B and mm -hmm. what's a C. Yeah. Um, is there, uh, you know, the, the yeah, the uh, really the only documentation is A plus says that your sugars have been steady, while an F means that uh, uh, you suck. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So I, I, I can, I'm happy to explain uh, how the flux score works. You know, it's, it's sort of an invented score there. And, and really what it's trying to do is track the variation, but what it's using is the, the trend data. So, you know, the up arrow, the, the arrow itself. So 
it basically takes all the arrows and assigns them a number. And so if you're, you know, if you're double arrow up, it might be a plus five. And if you're double arrow down, it would also be a plus five. And so it just sums all those together um, and then, you know, puts that on a scale from A to F. And so you know, I definitely realized that you know, early on when that, that was one of the early stats that was added and um, some people loved it and some people hated the grade. And so that was probably one of the things that inspired me to let you customize the stats and remove it. And it was removed as a uh, default stat, but um, you know, hopefully it could help kind of make sure that you, you know, that you keep your trend arrows more, you know, flat. Yeah. What I was curious can. about it was if it was actually derived from the CV uh, one and you had a scale on that or something. Yeah. But, it's completely, it's completely using the raw trend data from the arrows, the arrow trend data. So it should be fair, you know, it should be correlated, but pretty independent from the actual like standard deviation or CV data. Well, um, if there are no more burning questions, um, if there are, we'll certainly put them, you can throw them up on uh, SoCal loopers and I'll send them over to Josh. Um, th this has been great. I had no idea how comprehensive this was. <laughs> and now, mm -hmm. oh gosh, I need to push buttons today. Um, mm -hmm. This is great. Thank you. Um, I will make this a um, video available to you and really appreciate the time. Uh, it's excellent. No. Thank, Thank you, you guys. No, it's, uh, great to be able to do this. And if anyone has any questions, who's uh, questions who are, who are you know, watching this, you know, feel free to reach out to me on social media or Josh at sugarmate.io. I'm you know, happy to answer any questions or help with any issues you might have. So thanks, great. Guys. Thank you so much. You all have a really good weekend. You too.